how we thank you today for the privilege of standing in this moment. We acknowledge you as God, beside you there is none other. We thank you so much for the gift that you have given us in Deacon George Willis. Father, thank you for this moment. I pray even now that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. It is an honor and a pleasure. An honor and a pleasure for me to be here today. I want to thank the Willis family for asking me to stand and share a word from the Lord today. I'm just really grateful. George, so much has been said about him and it was all true. And he was a wonderful, wonderful man. A little upset with him though because I feel like he kind of snuck away uh, Dr. Young and I was landing on last Sunday he was taken off and as I thought about it we had a destination on the pool table we were supposed to settle feel like as I was landing, I feel like when he was taking off, he was probably looking at me and saying, told you. Because <laughs> he declared that he could beat me on the pool table, and I declared that no, you can't, and no, you ain't. And I'm going to beat you on your own table. And we went back and forth like that, but I'll catch him. <laughs> I hear you, P. Catch him. I'm not going to be before you long. Let me just do what I have to do. I realize now that George was preparing me for this moment. We have walked together and shared in ministry for the better part of 30 years. And he shared many things with me. And one of the things he's encouraged me, especially in this last year, Elder, do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to do just that. If you'll notice for just a few moments as I thought about what could be said regarding George today, and Pastor Fitz was right, he's already preached his own eulogy. Mm -hmm. But I want to just lift up a verse or two out of Psalm 37. Psalm 37 and verse 23 says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Yeah. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Amen. Just want to title our talk today A Good Man. A Good Man. I'm completely confident that if I were to poll the room today, all of us would agree that George Edward Willis Jr. was a good man. 
We did not say that he was a perfect man. All right. Because truth be told, we cannot say that about ourselves. Right. But all of us who really knew George from our own experiences and interactions with him, we know that he was a good man. He was a good man because of the way he lived and because of the things that he did. The text says that the steps, the mitzvah, mitzvah, which means the very course of a man's life is ordered, that is, it is set in place by the Lord. So one becomes good, not only by what they live and what they do, but one becomes good when they decide to yield their lives unto God and allow God alone to lead them. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, Acknowledge him and what will he do? Direct. He will direct your path. Uh, this is the choice that, that, that George made. He made the choice to say, God, I'm going to trust you. God, I am going to believe you and I'm going to obey and follow your word. And when a man makes that choice, then is when God sets a course for him. The text says that, that, that uh, uh, he directs the steps of a good man and then he takes delight in his way. This implies companionship for not only does the Lord just set the course or the steps of a man and leave man then to follow that course all along. No, it, it implies companionship. God sets the course, and then God also travels the course with us. Amen. I got excited about that because this means that George coming into each of our lives, whether as a husband or a father, a grandfather, a brother, an uncle, friend, or associate, it means that he came into our lives on purpose. He did not come as an accident or some random occurrence. He came because it was God's divine direction. Amen. So in the days and the weeks and the months and the years that come, when you think of something that George did or something that George said and something, some way he made you feel, just know that God favored you because he sent George into our lives. As a matter of fact, you ought to just take a moment and just thank God for sending George into my life. Come on, lift those hands and say, God, I thank you for George Willis. Oh, I don't hear nothing in the house. Say, God, I thank you for George Willis. Hallelujah. He did a lot for us. Hallelujah. You've heard the testimonies. You've heard of all that he, that he did and said. And, and God, God directed him into our lives. William Shakespeare, the playwright, said, the evil that men do lives on after them, but the good is off interred with their bones. I don't know who William Shakespeare was talking about, but that does not apply to George, because he's done really too much, and he's lived too well for it to ever be interred in the grave. As a matter of fact, I heard John write in Revelation, he said, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. From henceforth, said the Spirit, for they do rest from their labors and their works. Hallelujah. Their works do follow them. Amen. I'm glad that George lived that kind of life. Amen. So then what can we glean? What can we glean from an ordered life? A life that has been lived in service to God and in service to people. What, what can we glean from George's life 
that will help us as we continue our sojourn here in the land of the dying on our way to the land of the living. Well, I just want to just pull three things and lift those three things up. Number one, George was a worker. Amen. He was a worker. Amen. You've heard the testimonies of all that George did. And, and I can remember when George organized the, 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 the uh, housing, Victory Housing Counseling Center here at the church. And, and when he organized that center, uh, uh, I, I remember one day he came and he asked me, he said, Elder, he said, I need you to go with me to Washington, D.C. And we're going to meet with HUD and we're going to meet with the Council of National Black Churches. And they have some programs that are going on and some funding initiatives that I need you to be a part of. And I thought to myself, I said, well, uh, I really don't see why I need to go. <laughs> and I said, it was just like that. And he said, no, no, you're going because I need for somebody else beside me to know what's going on. So I said, okay, because you know you didn't tell George no. So we went to Washington, D.C., and I can remember us going into the meeting, and, and we're sitting there in the meeting, and, and we're meeting with the representatives from HUD and the CNBC were there, and they were sharing initiatives, and they were sharing ideas about what needed to be done, and they were just ideas, and I could tell George was getting antsy, and he was sitting there, and he was breathing, and and, and making little grunts and sounds, and, and I kind of looked, and, and you know, he kept on, and he turned his mouth, and, and finally, George's hand went up. And I thought to myself, oh. And George's hand went up, and they recognized George, and, and, and so George began to ask questions and, 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 and raise some concerns, and, and before I knew it, George had literally taken over the meeting. George was raising ideas and strategies that they had not even talked about. They had not even thought about. And by the time the meeting was over, George single-handedly had orchestrated that meeting and we came out of that meeting with an action plan that was then implemented by all the CNB chapters all across the country. Amen. George was about getting things done. He wasn't one that was going to sit and talk about, well, should we do it? Well, maybe we shouldn't do it. He wasn't like that. George was interested in results. George was interested in about getting the job done. How many know that George would get the job done? He, he would get the job done. He was, he, he was a worker, but not only was he a worker, I found out he was also a warrior. George would fight. Amen. George would fight. You could not have a better advocate on your side than George. Amen. If George was on your side, you didn't have to worry about it. Amen. 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 Because George was going to fight for the right. He fought for the rights of those who were disenfranchised. No matter what the cause, no matter what the concern, it didn't matter if he had to talk to the governor, if he had to talk to the mayor, if he had to talk to the council people. It didn't matter who it was, George was going to fight. And Norma was telling me uh, just the other day that not only would he fight figuratively, but he'd also, if necessary, fight literally. <laughs> she told me he laid hands on somebody at a council meeting one time. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all know he lay, he lay, who, 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 who he lay hands on? Who? I know you're here, I know you. <laughs> George was a warrior. Amen, amen. I, I remember going to, to visit him on several occasions just recently and, and within this past year and, and, and George was concerned because he was hearing about some things and some transitions that he didn't like 
and, and he, he, he actually called me to, to his bedside and he said, Elder? I said, yes, George. He said, are you all right? I said, yes, I am fine. He said, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I said, Elder, are, are, are you okay? He looked at me, you know how you're looking straight at me when he are you okay? And I said, yes, I am fine. Everything is fine. I said, God is in control and God has everything under control. And he said, mm-hmm. He said, well, I'm going to tell you. And I can't tell you the rest of what he said. <laughs> that will remain between him and I and the good Lord. But George, even though he could not get out of the bed, was ready to get up out of the bed and come fight <laughs> because he thought somebody was doing something to me. I said, George, all is well. It is okay. You know, God has this thing under control and it's all working out for our good. But George was about right. And he would fight for right. He was a warrior. But the greatest battle that I saw him fight, especially throughout the duration of, of this long extended illness, I saw him fight the good fight of faith. Amen. I saw him grow in faith. And, and, and every week when I went to visit with him and and, and we would talk and I would see him grow in his faith. His faith would grow. And even in times when the doctors suggested that he wasn't going to get any better, George would look at me and give me that look again. He said, Elder, I'm going to get better. And I'm going to be up. And sure enough, he would get better. He would get better. And he would do better because he was a but the third and final thing I want to lift up that we can take and glean from his life is that George was a worshiper. George loved the Lord with all his heart, with all his mind, and with all of his spirit. Amen. I can't even remember the countless many times that, that when I went to minister to him or I thought I was ministering to him, he ended up ministering to me. Yeah. And he shared so many experiences about what the Lord was doing and saying to him, even when he was sick. Amen. It reminded me of that old song we used to sing, uh, I am going to trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Amen. That, that, that was his, his mantra. That was his faith. He fought the good fight of faith. He was determined that he was not going to let go. He was not going to give up. And friends and family, if you need to remember anything about George, remember he was a man that walked with God. There was nothing that George did that did not involve the Lord. There was not a person that George met that no matter what the conversation started out as, before the conversation in, ended, he was going to make sure that the Lord was mentioned. Amen, amen. And, and, and so he, he kept the faith. He, he stood there. He loved to come to church. He'd sit right there on that first row. And even though he could not sing, he'd try to sing every song that the choir would sing. He loved the voices of victory. He loved serving with the deacons. He loved the ministers of this church. He was a great supporter and he would lift you up and, and encourage you. And when I would stand and preach, he would, he would say, preach it, Elder. He preach it, Elder. You, you did good, Elder. And then one Sunday, I, I, I didn't do so good. And, and, and George said, don't worry about it. <laughs> but he encouraged me anyway and just said, keep on Keep it on. Keep it on. Yes, 
Because the Lord is going to make a way somehow. And so I just want to tell you, family, the Lord will make a way somehow. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. And, and I know he wants me to remind your family how much that he loves you. He talked about his sons. He talked about his grandsons. He even talked about his sisters, his nieces and nephews. And, and, and Ashley Jr., I mean, George Jr., you know he talked about you. Amen. And the grandsons, he loved y'all and he loved Norma. Oh, he loved her so much. And the other Sunday, she told him, don't you leave here until I get back. I need to run home. Don't you leave here until I get back. And Norma left. And no sooner than she left, George decided the hour of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Most importantly, I have kept And I know he began to rejoice. As he said, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. That ought to make all of us shout. Because there's a crown of righteousness waiting for all of us. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, we became the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. So at his coming, we will receive the crown of life. Yes. And not for just me, but for all who love his appearing. Hallelujah. And I know he heard those wonderful day words since he was a good man. Well done. Good and faithful sir. Yes, yes. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up. And I'll make you rule over me. God, I thank you for Deacon George Willis. Oh, come on, let's praise him. Thank you for giving joy to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask now that the deacons and the ministers and Deacon Des, if you'll just come, Pastor Faison, please come and join me as the funeral directors come. 